Game Room Solutions new mini Nintendo vertical 19 inch classic bar top. You can have Galaga, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Popeye, and other graphic designs available to you. All powered by a Raspberry Pi 3. All you gotta do is have a screwdriver. A lot of it's put together with cam locks, but let's go ahead and show you how to build this beautiful thing. Would you believe everything fits in this box? All the parts, all the bolts, everything. So first thing, you have the two side panels and you wanna T-mold both of them. If you want help T-molding, I made a separate video, but basically just on the turns, you need to cut, cut the corners a little bit tighter. And other than that, just use a rubber mallet and they stick right in the grooves that are already pre-cut for you. Um, after you've done the T-molding, there's a couple other pieces that you're also gonna need to put T-molding on. The piece that goes near the controls, the control piece as you see here, and the top piece as well. You can get that all done. Next piece is the speaker. It needs to be screwed in. I, I didn't screw it in all the way so I can still get to the holes there, wire your speaker with speaker wire, and then you got a little U a dual USB connector here to connect controllers into your bar top. It's very easy. And then lastly, the electric control panel, which I did a separate video on how to actually wire every single thing, but you just screw that in and then line up the wires. As for the buttons here, I'm just screwing them in and adding the backs to them. I'm gonna slow down for the actual wiring, but this part should be fairly self-explanatory, just installing the buttons and the Sanwa controller till they're nice and tight. Let's do start and select here. We're gonna do seven through 13 here. So seven through 13, seven and eight, we're not, gonna, we're not even gonna use these at all. And then 11 and 13 is start and select. So start is the first one. So I have um, start as player one. So just get up on there. The next four are up, down, left, and right. So for those, I'll need another four. So those four will go here for the next four. That'll, that'll bank it off. And then I need to add them to here now. So. All right, so right is gonna be the first, is pin 21. So we'll go 21, and then it's gonna be the green wire over here. So we're gonna go ahead and connect it to the green. All right, and next in the order is yellow. Yellow is left, so the next one on the control board is left. So we got that in, and now we gotta do the next set. So we get another harness. Next set is gonna be on pins. On the pins farthest from the USB, we're gonna do the next set. All right, so plug those in. And this is your, on a PlayStation controller, the X, the O, those four main buttons. So starting with button number one, which should be, is button number one. So this one I'm gonna to send to button number one. Okay. And then this admin's gonna be, this will be button number two. So we gotta go in this order here. So we got that, and then we got two. Two. three, and four. And then we can do an LR. LR, we should just need two, here's a two. Which will be the next two, very easy. And the first one will be L. And the second one will be R. All right, so we got all of our positives mounted. Now we just need to do the negatives. It'll be a daisy chain. Pretty simple, they all go to negative. So we can just chain them up. Now there's two daisy chains in here and there's two ground holes on the actual Zinmo board. All right, so um, daisy chain. I actually want to start with a little bit less, so maybe that far of a reach, and then we'll just go one, two, three, 
three, four, five, and then we're done. Four, five. So I actually don't need this one. All right. And then we got our second daisy chain here. So then these are done. And then this daisy chain of grounds. Let's go ahead and plug one side into the ground. Ground. All right. So we're just hand wiring in our ground for the sanwa. I'm just feeding that into one, the daisy chain. All right, that's in. Let's go ahead and cover that. All right, so that's on. And then uh, let's leave a blank one and then we'll go into these. One. Two and three, and then we can pull it out of this. We'll pull this side out. Cool, and then we have excess. All right, so we're all wired in now for our controls. Sanwa is wired in. Buttons are wired in. A uh, couple extra little grounds here, and a couple little extra grounds here. But everything should be fine. So that's all done. This part's fairly simple, just put a screw in almost every hole, except where the monitor goes, you have some options. All right, so now let's start installing our boards. Um, first off are these two. I know we have this guy. I guess he goes right here, huh? Maybe, and then this would go Like this, potentially. Okay, that makes more sense there. Ah, uh, okay. There's a little slot there for the speaker, which goes right in here. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, now let's lock these into place. So we're getting a cam lock here and we're just locking these pieces in. It's like that piece, lock it in. This piece, all those pieces you gotta go open from the inside. Okay, well, we gotta rotate again. All right, we got a stubby. Everything's in there pretty nicely now, okay. So we got our USBs to go to our Pi, we gotta go, we gotta wire our audio. The next piece is this piece right here, which has a cutout for the plexiglass, and it would be like this. Yep. Because then the team molding towards the front, and the cam locks, I guess, will be on the other side. Next up, we have this piece here that also holds in the other piece of the plexiglass. That's just gonna go right like that, so you have the opening here. It's all set aligned just fine. Just two cam locks, very easily. All right, the top piece, you'll know it's the top piece because it has some um, T-molding on it. So let's go ahead and get that in there. In Game Room Solutions video, he says you could do it two ways. You could, this thing could be reversed. But I, he's like, because the cam locks are facing the up of the cabinet, so no one never noticed them anyways. Um, or you just gotta use a really stubby screwdriver to get in there or go at an angle. I'm gonna try going at an angle here. It's just this one cam right here. The other cam is actually pretty easy to get to. Now I think you have the um, plexiglass. He says this is the bottom, so just cut, should just slide in. Okay, yep, that's slid right in. Now put these on. All right, so monitor, got this, and then we just need a couple cam locks. There's a little bit of a glare, but you can see that the monitor's at an angle in there. So this has gotta go like this. Okay. No problem at all. Let's go ahead and get these in. 
I just rotate my, rotate this back plate. It goes all the way to the bottom of the unit to make room for this big plate here, which just perfectly fits in there. Nice. And I need a cam lock for that. The whole back is in. And then the last piece is the bottom piece. Again, I'm sure it could go both ways, but you probably don't want to show the cam locks on the bottom, so you put the cam locks inside. That finishes it off. All right, we got the LEDs in there. Look at them in there, and we got them plugged in. We ran the plug back behind the cabinet to the power outlet over there. Power outlet, and it powers the LEDs. Now we got to finish this up. Um, you don't need T-molding in the front here, I realize. So make sure your plexiglass is nice and clean. Grab your marquee. I believe it's acrylic, acrylic marquee. That would make sense. And then you just put that on. Hey, look at that. See it clear, and we take one out. It's a little brighter. Doesn't really make a big difference though. And I think it keeps the marquee straight, so. All right, and then we just gotta click, click, screw these on. There's four black screws right here. All right, marquee is on and working. Really solid, really on there. I wonder, I guess if we were to go, let's try this, where we just go right, one into the positive into right and then the negative into left, will that bridge them? Can we bridge the two ports? Let's try that. We got left into that, right into that, we have power cable, and then we have this auxiliary cable which will go to the Pi. It's pretty much just how the setup would be, MP3. So we're connected to the speaker, we just need power, and this goes to our Pi, and then this should amplify everything. The only other thing I wanna do is just Velcro it. Okay, so I got a little black piece of Velcro here. I'll just put one side on the amp, and then the other side on the uh, bottom of the unit. Okay, so what have I done? I ran the LED strips. I had to cut the cable about half as long and I still got four bands of lights. You don't wanna put it too close to the marquee because it'll leave a big black spot on there. So we put our lights, I have the cable running behind the monitor into the power, uh, into the power supply over here. I have not put the power supply on all the way yet. I also have my Raspberry Pi, we'll get to that in a moment. I've mounted the monitor. On the monitor, you have a lot of um, room to change here. You can either um, move these screws up and down, or you can even move it where this mounts, different spots on the, um, on the, uh, on the actual box itself. Now, uh, controls, I showed you how to wire all those. And basically, I just put the controls in. You should still be able to, um, open this up like this and access the controls and everything. I do need to finish screwing in this speaker here. It's not quite in there all the way. But also that'll be, when we put it all back together, it should all form in really well. I showed you guys how to wire the power. The amp was fairly simple. I just did the crossover cable left and right, cross it over, auxiliary goes in the MP3 slot, and then the power cord. There's two power cords with the kit. Both are the same for the lights and the and the amp, so those just went in. And then lastly, we have the Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi, I'll show you guys how to make the image um, in a separate video. But here's my Pi, I made the image, I just flipped the screen on the image, used the right ROMs, I got HDMI going to the monitor, I've got power going to the power supply over there, I've got the auxiliary cable going to my amp to the MP3, and I have three USB cables. The reason being is two of the USB cables go to the little front, Two USBs go here, they go right there, and that's for a controller. 
The last USB is your Zinmo uh, encoder board, and that's the encoder board that we wired earlier, and I showed you how to do that. So once you have the marquee on and everything else, one other modification I did is I cut the, um, the paneling here a little bit. I thought it was a little too long. I wanted to see more of the marquee. I didn't quite cut it perfectly straight. Like you see it's a little ragged because I had to use uh, metal shear cutters to cut that piece. But um, I really like the way it turned out personally, um, being able to see more of the Galaga logo. Now, um, the other thing I did was there's a little piece here, the little back plate with the power on it. You see the power over there. Put the back plate on, put the bottom plate on, put the back piece on. I still need to install the hinge right here so it clips into place. And then the top piece with the T-molding only on the back. And uh, that's about it, guys. I even tested it out. Uh, but let's go ahead and put on the last piece. And then uh, I think from there we can turn it on and show it off. Okay? Put this on the side, make sure everything's lined up. And then we just get our last piece. And you just gotta line everything up. So I'm gonna start it here. And this is where it gets a little tricky in just making sure all the little holes line up correctly all right so that's in there now and now i want to actually turn it one more time let's go ahead and unplug it okay and then now we can now we just got to put in all the screws on this top piece to, um, to get that all nice and tight. gonna come back. I made it to stage two. <laughs> 